Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Before all eyes shift to Georgia and Alabama on Monday night, your eyes should go to the other national championship on Saturday, the FCS national championship between Montana State and North Dakota State. And guys, as you know, all of last year, that historic spring season, we focused on the FCS. You know, a, a division and a level of college football that genuinely does not get nearly enough attention and hype that it deserves. It deserves so much more than that. And this game right here is an opportunity for all fans, whether you are a diehard FCS fan, new to the FCS world, or you're just right there in the middle. This is an opportunity for you to take part and to enjoy one of the last college football games of the year and one that is shaping up to be an instant classic down in Frisco. We've got a familiar face in the championship this year, guys. The North Dakota State Bison have won eight of the last 10 national championships. Eight of the last 10 FCS national championships. If you're looking for the Alabama of the FCS, look no further than the Bison from Fargo, North Dakota. Montana State, the Bobcats guys, they have not won a championship since 1984. That was the last time they won, and that was the last time they appeared in a national championship. So we've got literally a David versus a Goliath national championship here on Saturday morning down in Frisco, Texas. And we are here to break down everything you need to know for this game. And of course, share who we, will, we believe will be taking home the national championship, guys. Who will be crowned the FCS national champion. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Ready to break everything down for you today between the Bobcats and the Bison. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, guys. Again, if you uh, want our spread picks for the FBS National Championship, if you want the spread picks for all the NFL playoff games, if you want the spread picks for every game that we have for you in 2022, once the fall season starts up again, uh, the gridironexpert.com, that's the place for you. Because not only we get all those picks, over 250 spread picks for one low time fee, it's a year-long subscription, and you're going to win as we are beating out over 80% of the national analysts. So it is never too early, never too late to sign up for our expert picks. Take advantage of that, guys. Join our team today and start winning today. Again, the link for that down in the description below. So let's jump into this matchup here, guys, and we will start with the Bobcats of Montana State on offense. Uh, you know, and, and one beauty and one thing I like about the FCS, so many different things. Uh, obviously, the culture, the pageantry, the tradition, uh, the playoff system, which I believe is better than the FBS. Uh, but one thing I like a lot, too, is we have so many players on the FBS level uh, that transfer to an FCS program. Uh, whether they are, you know, elite, uh, historic, like a James Madison or a North Dakota State, or maybe one like Montana State. Because they are led by a former North Carolina State quarterback in Matt McKay, who in 2021 through four, 2,021 yards. Can't really make that up. 2,021 passing yards for Matt McKay, the former uh, Wolfpack member. 17 touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, and again, he has rushed for 316 yards as well, so does have some dual threat capability. The Bobcats have averaged 30 points per game, and they've done so behind a very strong rushing attack. So we want to focus on Matt McKay. Obviously, a very intriguing storyline with him transferring from NC State to Montana State, bringing uh, you know, kind of stabilizing that quarterback position. His dual threat ability is key, but the running game as a whole is what has carried the Bobcats this year as they're averaging 225.5 rushing yards per game. Their leader is their running back, Isaiah Eifens, over 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns on the year. And for me, if you're looking at the Montana State offense, guys, the key for them in terms of winning this game and having success is to keep the run game going, allowing Eifens to go, and allowing to incorporate Matt McKay a little bit into that rushing attack. Uh, again, only 316 yards isn't bad, but the RPO-style offense, trying to confuse the uh, North Dakota State defense in the sense of who's going to get the ball, that's how you win this game. That's how you sustain drives. That's how you put points up on the board. Uh, and so that's what we're looking at from Montana State on offense going into this game. For North Dakota State, their offense, guys, is very, very similar, just a tad bit better statistically. The Bison averaging 33.8 points per game and on the ground averaging 273.6 rushing yards per game. So ridiculous numbers there, guys, knocking at 300 rushing yards per game. That, that's, that's military academy-like numbers, Army, Navy, Air Force. Uh, again, unbelievable numbers from the Bison, a team that on offense is loaded with talent. They've got Cam Miller in at quarterback, 
who hasn't been great, a little over 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns, just three interceptions, but you don't need your quarterback to be great when you run the ball so well. And a year after North Dakota State failed to even make the national championship, a year where they struggled so much at the quarterback position, Miller has brought some more stability to that position. And he's been able to do that with his legs, a little bit with his arms, but he's been able just to rely more on the run game. A run game that has nine players with at least 100 rushing yards. The Bison have nine players with at least 100 rushing yards, and that is an impressive feat. And again, that goes back to what we were saying, very military-esque, very similar to what we see out of Navy, Army, Air Force, guys like that uh, at the FBS level. We've got Tameric Williams, 718 yards and 12 touchdowns on the year. Kobe Johnson, 565 yards. Hunter Lepke, 461 yards, five touchdowns on the year. Those are your three top rushers if you exclude their backup quarterback and Quincy Patterson, who has over 500 rushing yards on the year as well. So this is a loaded North Dakota State team that can beat you just about anywhere, through the air, on the ground. They want to do it on the ground, and they can do it with so many different players. And kind of like we said with Montana State, you just don't know ever who's going to get the ball. When you look at the defense, guys, both these teams are so stingy and so, st and so tough defensively, uh, both of them against the run. When you look at the Bobcats, guys, this is a team that's allowing just 13.4 points per game. That's it. Just 13.4 points per game, and they're allowing under 300 yards per game. You know, we always talk about that. If you're a defense allowing under 300 yards per game, you're looking pretty good. Montana State giving up just 296.6, so barely, but still good. The key number that we looked at was the fact they were only giving up 108.7 rushing yards per game. Again, compare that to North Dakota State, who's averaging nearly 275 rushing yards per game. Something's got to give, right? Which one's it going to be? Will the Bobcats be able to slow it down and force Cam Miller to try to win the game through the air, try to see if he can get the ball out to their leading wide receiver and Christian Watson? Or will North Dakota State continue to have their way on the ground just like they have against every single opponent this year? That is the question. One other thing that the Bobcats do extremely well, though, is the fact they are forcing turnovers left and right. They have forced 19 turnovers on the year. So if they can force a couple turnovers off of the Bison and set Matt McKay in this offense up with a short field, I wholeheartedly believe the Bobcats will take advantage of that, that they will be able to convert uh, off of those turnovers. Whether it's even just a field goal, that might be enough to do the job for Montana State. Again, trying to capture their first national title since 1984. North Dakota State, guys, just like they were offensively, just a tad bit better statistically than Montana State giving up 11.2 points per game, so a 2.2 differential there, not that bad. Both teams very impressive, not allowing many points on the board. Uh, but the key numbers we're looking at are the fact they're giving up less than 260 yards per game. So we were saying 300 is pretty good, but they're giving up less than 260. And the fact they're allowing is 83.2 rushing yards per game. And remember, Montana State is, allow or is averaging about 225. So you can make the argument, guys, that North Dakota State has the best defense in the FCS. You can make the argument. We, we made the argument earlier that if you were looking for an Alabama-type team at the FCS level, it's North Dakota State. If you're looking for uh, a comparison defensively, you know which defense at the FBS level is like North Dakota State or vice versa, it's Georgia. This is a Georgia-esque defense for North Dakota State uh, going into this championship game. Again, a defense is giving up just 83.2 rushing yards per game. You shut down that run game for the Bobcats, you're going to force Matt McKay to try to win the game through the air. Something that he is capable of doing. You know, if I had to pick a quarterback in this game, who has the quarterback advantage, Cam Miller or Matt McKay? I'm picking Matt McKay. More passing yards, more touchdowns, does a great job of taking care of the football. But North Dakota State has forced 20 turnovers on the year. And still, regardless of how the differential and stats, regardless of Matt McKay being better than Cam Miller, however you want to view it, neither team wants to throw the ball. They can, they will, but they would much rather play their style of ball and that's hard nose, control the clock, run the football, pound, 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 and on defense, force a handful of turnovers, get the ball back, pound, 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 control the clock. That's how they want to do it. They want to play bully ball. Both these teams do. They're not an air raid type team. Neither team really has the quarterback to do that. But when you look at this national championship, guys, in Frisco, like we just mentioned, it's, it's a game of bully ball. And when we talk bully ball, we talk about a, a game that could be and will be won in the trenches. North Dakota State, Montana State, both these teams have very solid defensive and offensive lines. It's a game that's going to be won up front. And we're not talking just for quarterback protection. We're talking about opening lanes for their run games, one that's nearly averaging 275 for North Dakota State, one that's averaging about 225 for Montana State. 
which team wins the battle up front and which team really kind of comes through and gets to stop defensively. That's going to be the key here. Which team's going to do that? You know, because you could have one, but maybe not the other, and that might not result in a victory. But I'm going to go with North Dakota State, guys. We're going to go with the North Dakota State Bison. How can you not? How can you not? You know, everybody tried to write off North Dakota State after last year, a COVID year where they played football in the spring. They failed to make the national championship. Everybody said, it's over. They're done. They're done. They've won eight of the last 10 national championships, guys. And this is a team that defensively, I do believe, is a tad bit better than Montana State. And a team that physically, I believe, is a tad bit better than Montana State and will have just enough push up front and has the talent in their backfield. Again, nine players with at least 100 rushing yards has the talent on offense to exploit this Bobcats defense. They will be able to do just enough to get ahead of Montana State. I believe they get a late score in the fourth quarter, puts them just enough ahead where Montana State is late, late rally. You know, a 10-point you know, uh, game with about three minutes left is what I'm really viewing here. But a late rally falls short for Montana State. And North Dakota State, guys, will win their ninth title in the last 11 years. And I can tell you one thing is for sure, the North Dakota State Bison, their dynasty, is far from over. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And of course, check out everything down in the description below. Go check out those expert picks if you have not already. It's never too early, never too late to sign up for those. It's a year-long subscription. Whenever you sign up, we guarantee you will start winning. So make sure to take advantage of that, guys. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to tune in for this FCS National Championship on Saturday. You do not want to miss it. Do not want to miss it. Stay tuned for this game, guys. And, of course, get ready for the National Championship on Monday between Alabama and Georgia, the last two college football games of the year. Do not miss out on it, guys. And do not miss out on the rest of the content we have here at the Gridiron Expert. But, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.